Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, you know, it's not like I'm trying to avoid it. On the other hand, I've also learned that just as a general rule, when I hit a wall, you know, when I hit resistance, you know, banging my head against that wall is not usually the yeah. way to go, you know, not for me, at least. Um, whenever I've made any kind of breakthrough, it's been in a flow, you know, it's been like, okay, that was natural. That was the way to go. And not to say you don't try a little bit, but when it's like, okay, the harder I push, the harder it pushes back. It's like, okay, this is not a matter of grunt and groan and scream and, you know, and bash your head against the wall until it breaks. It's like, it's that it just, you know, I've seen some guys that claim that works for them more power to them, I suppose, but it has yet to work for me. Um, and so it's like every so often I circle back around or poke, poke, poke. You know, are we, are we squishy yet? No. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> are <laughs> you done yet? <laughs> no, no. Okay. We're still a frozen chicken. All right. I guess we're going to go back, you know, come back later, you know, whatever. And um, <laughs> so, That's a great you know, way. and it's like, and it's like the Kai logo thing and whatever. Sometimes it feels like a little bit of a struggle. Sometimes it doesn't feel like flow. Sometimes it feels like I'm forcing it. But other times it feels like it's a muscle that I'm trying to exercise. But for me, the, I, I often feel like there's a um, a blurring of the of the signals. Like um, mm. I remember when I was a kid. When I was a kid. I was maybe late twenties, early thirties. I used to work until nine, ten o'clock at night on the weekends, um, and then I had about a twenty or thirty minute drive home, and there was nothing on the radio at that time. I, and all I had was a radio in my car and uh, mm -hmm. whatever. And so I had this game that I mean, this is like before smartphones and iPads and all that kind of stuff. So I had this interesting, I guess, curiosity thing that I would do is I would switch to AM radio. And uh, there's a point to this, I trust me. I'd switch to <laughs> no, AM. This, this is interesting. <laughs> I'd switch to AM radio. And I don't know if you've ever messed with AM radio at all. Most people... Now, if you've been listening to the radio these days, it's been a while. Yeah, but right. Yes, I remember. Um, but AM radio <laughs> specifically has, and I don't totally understand it, but there's something weird about AM radio and the way the waves work. And at nighttime, because hashtag physics, the the ray the waves will bounce off of the atmosphere, and mm. you will pick up signals from all over the place so during the day you'll just get your am stations around but at mm -hmm. nighttime you'll get stations from god knows where and i <laughs> would pick up these stations like i would just play with the dot because you had to be really really sensitive right mm -hmm. because you're picking up something from canada or montana or god knows where and that was to me was the fun it's like pick up a station and just try to listen to it long enough because if you listen to your station, they'll never say this is calling in from Salt Lake City, Utah, or wherever you. I don't even know where you live, right? <laughs> they'll just, you know, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, on Fifth and Main Street," blah blah, blah because you know Fifth and Main Street. But if I don't live there, I don't know where that is. You know, whatever. Yeah. And so to try, it was a game that I would play to try to listen long enough to figure it out. But my point in saying this was like, you know, you'd have to get really sensitive, and sometimes you'd pick up like two signals at once because you're getting your local station along with mm -hmm. K. Yes whatever um, from you know bozeman montana or, or saskatchewan canada or wherever the hell you're <laughs> picking something up from right and it feels like sometimes i'm picking up like different signals and i don't know which one's my ego or which one's a trauma response and which one's like actually a nudge or which mm -hmm. one's you know my heart mm -hmm. saying and i've had a you know sometimes it's really clear sometimes it's really obvious sometimes mm -hmm. they god they're they feel so close. Yeah. And I don't know how to, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, they feel like one and then I start thinking about it and then it feels like the other. And then like, but is it this one? But it could be that one. And of course, I think even Kyle would say, well, the more you're thinking about it, it's probably not your heart. And I'm like, okay, well then it's definitely not this, but I was initially called and it didn't feel like, you know, it's like, yeah yeah and then but, but then that but then that's you holding something that's so funny because you're describing this and it's almost like you're holding the energy and and, and this kind of inner movement within you and and it, it's kind of like trapped there yeah in this well, and it's usually when it's a scary decision right yeah if yeah. it was all like oh the nudge is to go buy a book 
no, I'd go buy the book because if it's a $10 book and the book sucks or the book wasn't the right thing, then, you know, at yeah. the end of the day, it kind of, okay, who cares, right? But, like, I was just, like, over the last couple of days, there was some coaching session thing that contacted me that initially felt like a nudge, go do it. Mm -hmm. But it was crazy expensive. And mm -hmm. I didn't really have the money. I could have probably made it kind of work, but you know, it all seemed really good. And there were some timing things about it that seemed right. And some other kind of coincidences that seemed to be like kind of falling into place. And it was feeling like a nudge, you know? And then like, but then other things weren't. And the more I, you know, the more I thought about it, and I was just like, okay, I'm having to justify some things here. And like two or three people that I respect and know me kind of on my journey right now were like, I don't know if this is like the right way for you to go, man. I'm not like I'm doing what they say, but I'm just like yeah. listening and saying, okay, that's an interesting thing. They're thinking yeah. this, you know? Um, and you know, I ultimately decided no, but it was just like, you know, if I hadn't sat with it long enough to recognize mm -hmm. what was going on, it sure as hell felt like a nudge in that direction, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And if I had just acted on it, you know, in a moment, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it would have been okay. Maybe Kyle would say it was just a trust thing. If I had acted on it and trusted, then maybe it would have been fine. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's, you'll, it's you'll in the past. I made my decision. I don't regret yeah. it either way. But it's just like you know, if it had gone the other way, and then you like you know go and drop a chunk of change on something because it feels like a nudge, and then because you didn't sit with it long enough to recognize mm, that signal wasn't a nudge, but it really kind of felt like it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and there may have been some aspect of it that was there really, was. Right. yeah. There, 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 there might have been an aspect of it, but then maybe, maybe you know, another aspect of it, what wasn't quite yep. there for you, you know, yep. like for me, I, I, that's an experience with, um, actually there's a, a dream tending kind of university that for years I've been getting correspondence on and really have been very interesting, interested in, but I've never, there was a part of me that was like this, this doesn't make sense. You, you know, it couldn't see the logic in it. But at the same time, I have gotten so much experience that kind of that line of work is very natural to me. And now I'm interacting with my friend Anastasia, and she's gone through the exact training mm. that I keep on getting all this, you know, uh, may, even email, even to this day, I get from them. And, and we've, we've done some dream tending and other things together and it, it it's a very natural thing for me but i feel in a way that my experience now and and the, the way i've come to it and met it is is in a my own unique way and i feel of course i will enter i, I am entering kind of into that realm but i'm doing it it, from a different direction and a part of me is glad that I didn't get caught up in that because I would have been kind of trained in, in a formulaic way that I really feel I am being given a, an expansion or a new view or a new way to enter into it and it, it kind of is is allowing some of my own real uniqueness to show up in it. Uh, and so it's not, I'm not weighed down by kind of the dogma that probably I would have had before, you know, if I would have had that training. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It was interesting because this coaching program, there was a lot that they were saying that really resonated with a lot that I've been feeling lately and just a whole host of things. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the timing of it looked like this. I've, I've been with working with a coach for the last 10 months or so. Um, it is not going all that great right now in my estimation. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 
not a secret, just not enough time. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And so Thursday night was not a great session. It wasn't like a fight or anything like that. It's just like I had been noticing, again, part of this noticing thing is like, yeah, this is an increasing amount of like unease, almost anxiety going into our sessions every time now, you know, yeah. and a little bit of tension in my body every time we start up, you know, those types of things, you know. And, um, and so like, I'm starting to think like, I mean, I, I paid for a year with the guy. So basically say, sorry. And I don't think I get a refund and that's fine, I guess. You know, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, that was Thursday night, Friday. Mm -hmm. I was feeling some anxiety that kind of told me I need to go explore this a little bit. Like I didn't know what the anxiety was all about. There was some stuff around the podcast and there was also something else, you know? Mm -hmm. um and so long story short i was exploring that and kind of what came up was this feeling of like um a loss of control right? mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. you know kind of doing the whole like talking to little matt kind of a thing you know inside kind of a deal and trying to see what came up and see what he was saying and what he was afraid of and this and that and what i realized over the course of this was you know a lot of this feeling of a lack of control, a feeling of, um, um, so like also around the podcast, what was happening was like, I felt like some of the excitement and the energy and the flow around it was sort of fading a little bit, like the gas under the gas pedal was fading off. And I felt this before with other projects and it's so frustrating because it's like, you've got something you feel so good about, like there's so much draw and the universe is pulling you or pushing you, or it's just like, it feels like everything's there. And then like, to me, it just, mm -hmm. you know, and you, and we've talked about it. It's just gone. Right. And yeah. I was, it wasn't happening, but I'm like, this feels familiar. Don't do it. No. You know, and what's, mm -hmm. what was anxiety was just like, it feels like it's out of my control. Yeah. And that's what kept coming up. Like somebody or something else decides what happens to my life, but it's not me. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And that it decides that I don't get to, right? And it's not like it replaces it with something better, you know, or at least not that I can, <laughs> not that I can see like in the moment. It's not like, okay, we're going to stop this so we can do this. It's like, we're going to stop this so you can just coast for like six goddamn months or whatever until maybe <laughs> we'll give you something somewhere down the road. You know, I'm not saying like, it's nothing better. I'm just saying like, you know, you just yeah. sit there and go into this like, tailspin for a while until yeah. the juju shows up again you know yeah. um and um and so what was coming up was you know there's this feeling of frustration anger rage anxiety yeah. fear and something gets to control you and you get no say in this matter right that's yeah. what it, that's what i felt like at least you know and as i was exploring that i'm like that sounds like my dad oh dang you know um <laughs> now that wasn't my dad much if anything my dad ignored me more than anything else but that was my dad when it came to go to church right i didn't mind going to church on sunday morning so much youth group and whatever i went to one of these like modern contemporary churches you know where youth group was like mm -hmm. a party practically right but sunday evening I never liked going because Sunday evening church was like the also ran of church. And it was like even the also ran of the also ran of youth group. Right. <laughs> you know, so they didn't put any effort into it because it was like four kids showing up who didn't want to be there either, you know, with the youth pastor who didn't want to be there either, you know, and everybody knew that nobody wanted to be there. And we were all there because <laughs> our freaking somebody else told us to be there. Right. And yeah. my dad was like insistent that we would go. And so I'm like, this sounds like, you know, Dad saying I'm going to go when I want to not go. There's something that I want to do, and Dad says we're going instead. And it's not like it's replaced with anything better, <laughs> right? Yeah. And when I started thinking, I was like, man, there's been a lot of things in my life where it's like I wanted to do something. You know, little Matt wanted to do something, and that you know, big Matt said, no, we're going to go do this because this is better, or this is more responsible, or mm. whatever the case might be, right? Um, you know, this person is in need, so we'll go help them out. Your customer just called you on a Sunday, so we'll answer the phone. You know, this person needs to move, 
you know, and all you were going to do was play a video game. And so they need help moving or they're a person in need or you know, yeah. whatever. Right. They were almost always for very valid, very honorable things to do. It wasn't just like, you know, you know, stupid stuff in the sense of, you know, morally stupid stuff, you know, whatever. But I realized how many times I had just basically ignored what I wanted to do because something was supposed to be, you know, better. Mm. Should be better. What yeah. I should be. And I was like, okay, I wonder if this is like basically like a temper tantrum sabotage. I'll show you inner child kind of a mm-hmm. you yeah. know, I don't I don't know. Yeah. I I felt like I started down a path and I didn't get to the other end of the rope. I just found the rope, if that makes any sense, you know. But part of what came up out of that was like, okay, I need to, you know, I had to have a little talk with myself about not ignoring my own nudges, frankly, you know. Yeah. And then what was interesting was two hours later, that phone call comes from that coaching guy, right? And that's why I was like, is this, I just made yeah. this commitment to myself and then this dude shows up that I wasn't expecting, you know, I knew mm-hmm. it was a cold call. It was literally a cold call, you know, that I never mm-hmm. answered. And I answered that one. I was like, this all seemed kind of synchronistic, you know? And so, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's where I was at. So. No, yeah. I, I'm i impressed with kind of your ability to sit with that and with all of it. You know, like. Even now I'm judging. Wow. Like, what, did, what did I just making all that up? <laughs> No, I, I mean, no, I that's what's going through my head. I'm like, well, I'm making I mean, all that up I mean, because time, me, you know, every, you know, our mind wants to, to know there's an answer. Our mind wants to make sense of it. Our mind wants to do it. But I think you're right. I think what you said is, I think you think you found the end of a rope and I think you get to be with it more. Yeah. I think that, I think that going to another coach in the end actually might usurp this experience that you get to have right now with kind of feeling your way down that rope um you know and you knowing what it is what what a real nudge is for you honoring your child what it thinks is happening yeah. you know whatever is going on with that because it's it's it, i think there's a lot in this for you a huge amount yeah when i mean was, was, i see it i'm just like i'm like looking down there i'm like oh my gosh you know this is big i mean because even when you first started talking about it this this idea of you know you losing kind of energy in these projects of yours i mean a part of me a part of me even wonders about how you view projects and that what kind of um, energetic oomph you're expecting from them. You know, if there's an, an, um, an emotional, not just kind of, of energetic, like light, like, Oh, I know this is true. There's light here, but like, is there an emotional kind of something you're expecting, you know, back from it? I mean, that there's, I, it just feels like there's so much here. Well, it's interesting you. you say that. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I did a little bit of poking around with that one, right? Because yeah, I realized, okay, last summer I had this project that just, it was like, I think I even, I, I might have mentioned it. Anyway, doesn't matter. You know, idea, fire. I mean, it was just like everything landed. Like everything showed up. It was just like flow. You know this idea Mm -hmm. thing right all i had to do was implement it and there was this one last piece that i had to figure out you know and it wasn't like a figure it out it was just like a a decision about something and Mm -hmm. stalled and then Mm -hmm. all of the gasoline just evaporated right all of the fuel behind it evaporated and it went from flow natural ease to just like resistance 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 right yeah and and I'm like, suck. That sucks. Because this was fun. <laughs> you know? And yeah. I don't, it's not a matter of like minding the work. It was like all of a sudden this went from like natural flow to resistance, like stop, you know? Yeah. Um, and you just kind of wash it all fade away. And you're like, no, but I, you know, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. 
Yeah. And, then, and, and the podcast wasn't that, right? There was a lot of decisions there and there was a lot of work there. I didn't mind the work. I didn't mind the decisions. And so I'm like, what was the difference between those two? And there was other things in my past that felt similarly as well, where it just like, poof, gone, right? What was the difference there between all of those and the podcast, right? And what I was coming to was expectations, right? Mm. Um, and you were just talking about expectations, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes they were expectations that I was placing upon myself, like, oh, it'll be so cool when this and if that and how it'll grow to be this and you know, whatever. Other times it was expectations that others had on me, right? And it's not like, you know, Matt, you got to hit these quotas, right? Or nothing like those. I mean, every so often it was, but more often than not, what it felt like it was expectations from somebody this is a concept that's only kind of fresh in my head. So it's kind of unpolished, but from somebody who was validating me. So it would be mm. like, you get to like a great example. I started with this one company as a salesperson. Didn't really know what I was doing. Like I didn't know the product very well. I was brand new, but it was like, everyone was like, yeah, Matt's, Matt's great. He's so smart. He's going to figure it out. He's got great things ahead of him. And it was all this validating stuff. Right. It yeah. wasn't like, you know, you need to hit these numbers, Matt. And I was feeling pressure. It was all like heaping praise and compliments on me. Like, hey, you're, we're really impressed. This is not the other thing. Good feeling stuff. Yeah. Not not toxic. At least I didn't take it that way, certainly. But it was that validation from people that I was admiring or maybe looking for validation from because I wasn't getting it inside at the time, you know? Yeah. And so I was, there was expectation there somehow. I don't, yeah. that, that's the other end of the rope I haven't found yet, right? But there was something no, there I, I see the right, that just I evaporated see all of the fun from it as soon yeah. as they started complimenting me. I'm like, what? Well, like well, that's the part that I haven't connected the dots yeah. on, right? <laughs> you know, like, oh, it's so, I feel it so strong there. And I get it. That's so interesting because. Even, even when people quote unquote put a positive spin on how they, what they're reflecting to you or saying you are, it's still a box and it's still a box, it, especially if it's a quote unquote positive thing, it's a box that still is confining because, well, what if you are what if you're confused? What if you don't understand? No, you are mad and you are going to figure it out yeah, and yeah. you're going to do it this way. And, and, and there is pressure there. It's still a certain box. And they're saying you need to operate within this way yeah. in order for us to get the most out of who you are and what you are. And this is what we expect you to be so that we succeed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, like I said, I'm still trying to internalize it and make mm -hmm. the connections, you know, make the connections in here right now. So, but, um, but with the podcast, you know, and thanks in part to the, you know, coming off the high of the hot seat or whatever, I guess, but, you know, with the podcast, it was like, I just decided to say, if I'm going into it, it's with zero expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, if I record it, cool. If I record more than one, okay. If I don't, fine. If I publish it, cool. If I don't, okay. If one person listens, cool. If a million people listen, cool. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if they like it, cool. If they don't, cool. I don't care. Not an apathetic, I don't care. Like it's just a yeah. no expectations. I need no expectations around this thing. Zero, none, zip, zilts, nothing. <laughs> you know, don't mm -hmm. look at the views. Don't look at feedback, nothing. I don't care. No expectations. Just as long as it's fun. As long as I'm enjoying yeah. it. As long as it's there, go. And none of this, you know, what do I do when I get to 50? How do I manage an email list? That... Crap. I need to, that, yeah. that needs to, that needs to go away. All of that needs to go away. Right. Yeah. And um, I'm told I'm so with you on that. Yeah. It's, and, it's so, and, you know, I, I think, you know, as part of no expectations, it might make sense to figure out, distribution strategies or email lists but not because i need to figure out how to maximize this thing to get to this goal as soon as i do that i know 
gas is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if I'm doing it because that seems like the fun thing to do or whatever, cool, you know, but I've got to follow that that stream of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and that might lead to the same place, but it needs to lead in its own time, I think, you know. No, I, you're saying some interesting things because I energetically I'm feeling kind of a really similar thing <clears throat> as far as, I mean, even things that last week, you know, I'm like, okay, this is my agenda. I need to, you know, I need to, to post this on my, my, you know, YouTube channel or whatever. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, I get into it and it's like, okay, here's an agenda that I'm, that I'm doing and everything just goes real boom. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. That, that isn't the, that isn't the thing that I get to work on. And, and it's kind of this moment, of my moment, my moment, it's almost, I get to be shown mm-hmm. what it is. Yeah. It gets to be kind of revealed to me. And not to say that even like the thing that I was going to do and my agenda was a bad thing. No, it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't whatever, but, but yeah, it, th- there's something very different that's happening. And and so I think that, and maybe you hit it early on. I mean, just because there's this loss of kind of that's this energetic, and I and I'm kind of curious about it how it relates to polarity, but kind of the switch off, you know, that occurs for me. I start to get to tell myself is it doesn't mean that that thing isn't worthy or that thing isn't whatever, and maybe tomorrow or in a week maybe it will switch on again if i go about it in a different way like i think sometimes how can i say it if we're stuck on the exact way it gets to happen sure maybe it gets to turn off fully but i think in the moment who knows what's going to be revealed to me as what's what is the thing to step into you know and and maybe in a week's time i go back and i and i'm just entering it into a new way again i'm entering it into a different way yeah um, yeah and it's so i think our ego though if we see these patterns it can look at it and quickly assign failure to it. It can quickly assign the idea of failure when that shift in energy occurs because it's supposed to be the one that's making things happen. And if we're in, and if we're going about this in a completely new way, we I get to get over myself in a <laughs> I get to get over myself. And I think that's what you're kind of saying with the no expectations thing, even though I think that expectations mm-hmm. are inevitable to have. They're inevitable yeah. to have. But but I think, and, and I've been told this, like, get over yourself. I mean, in, in a yeah. way, you know, it's like, yeah. get over yourself. I mean, in one aspect, I'm embracing myself even deeper and in another aspect, I'm getting over myself, you know, because it's not, it's not the ego, it's not the mind that has the agenda that's pushing these things forward. It's just mm-hmm. me letting it be revealed to me yeah. in yeah. essence. So it's cool to be able to verbalize some of that because I haven't been able to make, to verbally kind of you know, how is that said though? Yeah. When you, you know, when you, when you have to explain it to somebody else, there's something different about it, you know, yeah. when, it, when it just floats around in your head and you're just thinking about it is different than when you actually, it has to come out this way. You've got to process yeah, it. You've got to process it in a way that you have to explain it. 
you know, my body is actually shivering. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's because it's like there, there's this kind of expression or something that it's getting to release, and then mm-hmm. you know, as I express it, I can feel it. It's it's like it's it's shaking. You know. Yeah. 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 It was. Um. I, I remember I first learned. I first realized that I didn't connect what was happening, but I noticed it first when I was in high school, and we'd get like math homework, and then. Inevitably, at least one problem that I couldn't figure out, and this was like you know, you know, algebra three or pre-calculus or one of those math problems, you know, where the math problems would take half a page of figuring out, you know, to get the answer kind of a thing, you know. And I would just get stuck somewhere at home, and my math mm-hmm. teacher would always, you know, start off math class by saying, you know, anybody have any questions of last night's homework? And if you yeah. did, you know, he'd try to do them on the board for you. And I never liked the idea of him doing the problem for me, or, or I rarely did. Um, instead, what always made more sense to me was, hey, would you let me tell you what I did? And you tell mm. me where I went wrong, because that would help yeah. me kind of like adjust whatever I did wrong, you know. And Gwen, I swear, it would be like, okay, so first I went to 2x at, okay, forget it, I figured it out. It was just like, that was it. But I had spent like 45 minutes in my bedroom at home, just like scratching it yeah. out, new pieces of paper. I just could never get past, you know, I would have gotten all the way to yeah. the end and the equation wouldn't work out and start over and start over and start over and back it up and start it over and start it. And sitting in yeah. the classroom, I didn't even have to like say the equation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't even get through the first problem, you know, the first reading it out loud, let alone any of the stuff before like, my brain You're figured like, it out, but it was, I see it. Yeah. It was only because I had to say it as opposed to just circling mm-hmm. it around up here, you know? So it was, uh, this it is was, brilliant. That's so interesting. Yeah. How, how that, that, that is for me too. Part of that I feel is, yeah, it, it, it's instead of being trapped within kind of this one, this one self, it's, there is something really amazing of actually two energies together kind of in one um kind of you know it's an old christian saying when two or more are gathered in my name you know yeah. in this one singular purpose you know and and i think there is kind of a magic in that mm-hmm. that is quite amazing you know like all of us in in this in this idea of oneness, I think a lot of people are scared and, and they get this idea, well, oneness, and that, that means there won't be any me. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as I experience oneness, no, like, it, it, the great thing is on this earth plane, okay, I wig out at actually more and more how cool being on earth is, and like having a body and like what we can do with it. But like, like I, there can be a me and there can be a you and there can be a resonance. And we, we start, we start clearing and influencing each other. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it doesn't negate a me. It doesn't negate a you per se. Like we can experience ourselves (coughs) in our, you know, these amazingly subtle differences and uniquenesses but at the same time we can be one and we are one you know it's like what an awesome dichotomy and truth we can experience here uh, that we can experience a a unique self and oneness yeah you know